Hello, I am Dr. Thompson Akwantuba, international physician, political leader, and communicator, certified professional and expert in Global Health USA, Medcom subspecialist, Health, global health communication. COVID 19 updates. COVID 19, COVID 19 updates. Globally, the pandemic is having positive outcomes here and there in countries in all the regions of the world. In the Americas, the United States is beginning to see a reduction in new cases with each passing day week or month. So the prevalence in the United States is falling. The hospitalizations and the deaths from COVID-19 are also falling. The same with the nation of Canada. Because as global health experts, we look at health conditions that have trans bother presence in socio and political and economic effects. So any health condition that is a pandemic it means it, it affects people globally and it's a global health issue. SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 that it has produced has affected the world a lot. They say there are more people who have died in the United States from COVID-19 than people who died during the 1918 influenza flu. But that notwithstanding, we should be able to ask ourselves in terms of numbers and population, that may be so. If you compare the population of the United States today, 2021, and the population of the United States in 1918, the numbers are different. And so the, the ratio of deaths compared to the total population is also different. But we are not talking about 1918, even though we can always go back to 1918 to, to learn some lessons to apply to pandemics. COVID-19, a good example that we are dealing with. This global health infectious disease epidemic, because many people hear people talk about an epidemic, and the thing that epidemic only applies to infectious injurious agents, whether they are fungi or fungi, you want to call it, whether they are bacteria, Gram negative, gram positive, and you know, whether they are viruses, be they RNA or DNA viruses, whether they are parasites, there is the endemicity. That is to say that. At any particular time, you will, ha you will find that that problem 
be they an injurious disease problem or maybe a health problem, maybe a chronic problem that suddenly has a very huge population affected within the period that becomes a pandemic. So an endemic problem may suddenly become an epidemic. And when that epidemic actually happens in multiple countries and continents around the world, then it's called a pandemic. So we could have, like we are talking about, the drug epidemic, fentanyl and other drugs that are abused in the United States. Suddenly we have huge populations of people in, in America dying from, from this problem. And so it's an epidemic. But before then there were people, it was an endemic problem. There were people who were, you know, are, are consuming drugs and are, are abusing drugs, but the number wasn't suddenly very high. In global health, we also talk about the dailies and the qualies, the quality adjusted lives, the disability adjusted life, yes, the quality adjusted life, yes. So we, we look at how certain disease conditions affect the quality of life of a people. In Houston, there, there is nothing like a health committee in the city. They have a, a quality of life committee, which is a, 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 a beautiful thing because it's not limited only to everyday disease conditions because we know how we define a health according to the World Health Organization. It's a state of complete social, physical, mental, and some of us have added spiritual well-being, not necessarily the absence of disease or deformity or disability. So, diseases and disabilities can be there. And they can affect your quality of life. They can affect your, your lifespan. How long you are going to live can be affected by diseases and disabilities. There are people who talk about COVID. They talk about COVID long haul. So they are looking at the possibility of covid how are creating disabilities. There are studies going on to look at the effect of COVID in pregnancy. And can fetuses due can 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 fetuses be delivered with congenital abnormalities or deformities? That is to say that they are delivered and at bed medical personnel can detect deformities. That, that is what we call congenital abnormalities or deformities, which are things which happen during the embryological development pro process. The United States of America has looked at the request of one of the three companies that produce the vaccines that they are using in the U.S., that's the company of Pfizer that came out working with the Turkish German couple who discovered the vaccine. Their company is known as the Bow and Tech Company, working with Pfizer. And Pfizer has gotten approval of his request to have a third dose or third doses given to certain people, even though it, it doesn't meet the requirements of the administration of President Joe Biden to have everybody who was vaccinated by, who, who, who was given the, 
the Pfizer vaccine to have a booster. Those who qualify according to the FDA or the, or, or the Food and Drug Administration in the United States are people who are above 65 years of age, certain people with certain health or pre-existing conditions, and those who are high risk. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC of the United States of America, under the directorate and leadership of Walensky, MD, has recommended that teachers, frontline workers, health workers, be part of that category of those who are high risk. Then we have, we know people who have pre-existing, certain pre-existing conditions. There are certain conditions that on their own will actually depress the immune system. In immunology, we have immune diseases. Some of those immune diseases are inborn. They are related to inborn errors of metabolism and related things. Some of those are coming from cancers and certain, you know, anti-cancer medications, chemotherapy, related drugs and things that on their own can depress the immune system. Because you see what medications, vaccines do is they stimulate the immune system to be able to, to fight. The immune system is a defense, is a warring uh, army mechanism of different body cells, predominantly white cells and, and the other um, antibodies, proteins which the body makes to fight what they call foreign bodies or antigens. So everything that is foreign, every injurious agent, every antigen that comes from outside, the body fights it and tries to overpower it. But when that doesn't happen and it overpowers the body, then it begins to create its own problems. So Immunology on its own, vaccination is all of that primary understanding of bioscience. So we can have uh, a situation like we have, and we have conditions that are depressing the immune system. So, we know this, that the immune system is not actually working as well as it would do for somebody who doesn't have a depressed and immunocompromised, we will say, situation. Somebody will say, but that is mostly, we mostly use that under HIV AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, right? That's correct. But so far, Though that has been a discussion, there is no scientific evidence and data to back the fact that people with HIV AIDS who are having their normal treatment and therapeutic um, health medical commodities are not prevented from uh, COVID-19. So, the information and the education is for you to know. As a medical communicator, I am telling you that the CDC has come with those guidelines following the FDA approval of a booster for certain categories of people. So anybody who is above 12 years of age and who qualified and had had the first dose and the second dose, and after six months, could have a booster in the United States. Now, this is not contrary to the position of the World Health Organization, because we've been having the 
the bi-weekly uh, briefings and meetings with the uh, Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, out of Geneva. And I know that Dr. Tedros uh, is in the forefront of no vac uh, COVID vaccine nationalism, yes to equity, yes to COVAX. And America has been doing a lot. America has contributed, as the President has said, tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of vaccines to all the continents of the world. That's why you see the packages is written um, uh, COVAX, and then you see the United States of America. That tells you that that is the, the WHO uh, COVAX contribution that is coming from the United States of America. You should know that Trump had actually pulled the U.S. out of the WHO at the time that the WHO needed uh, American leadership and contribution. But as people will say, thank God. Thank God for all. you and all of us who fought so hard that things get better. And as God will answer prayers, or if you don't believe in God, as nature will do its things, somebody who was going to work with the rest of the world had to come in as the president of the United States. And the world owes America, the world owes America a thank you for what America has, has already done and the pledges that the Biden administration has made in its recent COVID-19 summit with other world leaders and the pledges that he has made, the world owes America a thank you and the, and the world is saying thank you. And the world is pleading with America that more should be done because there are lots of people in lower middle income countries who have, who have not had the first uh, dose. Most African countries have had just less than 3%, 4% of their vac uh, population vaccinated. But so far, the, the public health measures, the social measures are working. So this is saying that those of you in the Americas, South America, in Africa, in Eastern and other parts of Europe, same with Asia, the island states and nations, especially those of you who have been talking about what you've been doing and your challenges at Onga 76. We experts in medical communication or medcoms. I specialize in global health communication, are actually saying that keep on relying and applying your public health and social uh, measures that have helped your countries to contain this virus so far. We have very low hospitalization rates and deaths in many African countries, thanks to what you have done and continue to do that. Continue to, to test, trace or contact tracing, do the physical and social distances as is required. For those of you who are in Africa and you're preparing for the AFCOM, the 9th of January, there will be matches in the Olympic Stadium and the others in other places that we know and the uh, leadership from South Africa of the African Football Federation is working towards that and working with the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros and all the others to make sure that it is a safe come together because the host nation, the Cameroons, it is the Cameroon, so because we have the English Cameroon and the French Cameroon, and I happen to come from both Cameroons. My mother is from the French Cameroons, and my father is from a little, from a place called the Kiliwinde in the Kumbas, and the the the, the southwest uh, region of the Cameroons. We thank you for everything that you are doing in preparation for that. And as I said, in the Americas, everything is being done. We are having um, good outcomes and the people are advised to continue to respect the public health and social measures which are put in place. Those who are not vaccinated are called upon to go for the vaccines. And so far, that is the situation of COVID-19.